Hello and welcome to another tutorial for Excel users. In this video we're going to start looking at using multiple workbooks. And here we have four spreadsheet files or four workbooks and these are basically sales reports from four locations as you can see east, north, south and west. And I want to open all these simultaneously and there's a few ways I can do that. One of the ways is simply to click and drag around the four files like so. Another way, if I just click away to deselect, is to click on the first one, hold down the shift key on the keyboard, and then click on the last one. And again, if I click away, one final option, especially if your files are not in a continuous list like this, is to use the control key. And with the control key, I can, for example, select the first one, and the control key held down, select the third one, and then the second and the fourth. So I don't need to select them in a continuous sequence. Anyway, they're all selected now, so I'm going to open them up and we'll have a look. Now, what you'll notice is they're all the same insofar as they uh, contain the four weeks that we looked at previously in the worksheet tutorials and a summary worksheet. And if I just hold down the control key on the keyboard and use the tab key, I can actually cycle through those four open workbooks. So you'll see what I've done is simply put a different color into the top cell to indicate that they are different workbooks. If you look at the title bar as well, you'll see the name of the file as I scroll around. Another way you can access the different workbooks is to simply click on the window menu, this is in Excel 2003 of course, and select the appropriate workbook that you want to look at. I've got one, two, three, four. So if I want to look at the south workbook, simply click on the first one there. Another option is to click on the window menu and simply type the number so you'll see the west is number four, so if I press number four on the keyboard, it switches to the west workbook. Now what I'm going to do now is create a new workbook, and this will be a summary of the other four workbooks. Okay, so just click on the new button there. And to begin with, I'm just going to go back to any of the other workbooks, and on the summary worksheet, I'm going to click in the top left or to the left of the A and above the number 1 to select that worksheet. Right click copy. If I now go to the window menu I can go to that new workbook and then paste in, right click and paste the data from the other workbook. Okay. Now if you have a look at the figures in the rentals column you'll see that it's actually referring to the worksheet data in the West workbook. Now I'm going to actually delete that out for now. I'm going to rebuild the calculation in column C. Don't worry about this division by zero error here. That will get fixed once we put data back into column C. So I'm going to click into cell C3 and I'm going to take data from each of the other workbooks. So I'm going to press equals on the keyboard to begin the calculation. Control and tab will take me to the first workbook I'm interested in. And again, just make sure I'm in the summary worksheet. Click onto cell C3 and then press plus on the keyboard. Control and tab again takes me to the next workbook. Make sure I'm in the summary sheet again and click into cell C3. Plus again on the keyboard. Control tab on the keyboard to take me through to the next workbook. Click summary tab, select cell C3, and I've got one more to do. So plus on the keyboard, control tab through to the final workbook, make sure summary is highlighted, click C3, and that is the calculation complete. Now it does look a fairly complicated calculation, but bear in mind all we've done to create that is point and click, and obviously cycle through the workbooks as you've seen. So although it looks complicated, the process of building it is fairly straightforward. Now to complete, all I have to do now is press the Enter key. I go back to my new workbook. And again, if I just click on to uh, cell C3, you can see the formula in the formula bar there. Now, of course, the beauty of this is that to complete that, I can simply copy down and it will apply relative self-referencing only when I've made a little change here because if I actually copy down, I'll just copy down one cell to demonstrate that right now it doesn't work. It actually puts the same value in there because it's got the same cell information or it's drawing its data from the same cells as the previous one. 
So I'm going to delete that. Go back to cell C3 and I'm going to go through the formula and modify it. You'll see if I come to the first one, here's the problem. It says $C, $3. So it's looking at one cell and if I try and copy down, it will always have $C, $3. And I need to modify that, and the way to do that is simply delete the second dollar symbol. So that as I copy down, the letter C will always remain there, and that's not a problem because I'm not copying across columns. But the number 3 will update as I copy the formula down. And you'll see that in a second when I've completed the modification. So I'm going to go through each of the cell references. That is obviously looking at those of the four workbooks. And just delete out the dollar symbol in front of the row number and that will allow the relative cell referencing to work when I copy the formula down. So I've modified that formula now so it now simply has the dollar symbol in front of the column letter which is absolutely fine. Again just press the enter key to accept that. Click again onto C3, put the mouse pointer over the bottom right and now I can copy that down without any problem and it will automatically update the row reference number. And if I just click down through a few of those you'll see that it does indeed do that. You'll notice also if I just click away in column F uh, I now have these hash marks in cell F2. The reason for that and if I just go between F and G and double click to extend it it's simply that the column wasn't wide enough to fit the new total. So if ever you see those hash marks and if I just reduce the width of that column if ever you see these it simply means that the column isn't wide enough for the content and you just have to extend the column. Okay, so that is quite simply the process of taking information from other workbooks. I'm going to save that workbook now. So if I just hit F12 on the keyboard and just bring in that dialog interview there, I'm going to call this um, group summary and just hit enter. So that's now saved and that will do for this tutorial. In the next one, I'm going to look at taking data again from the other worksheets to create a, um, a comparative summary for the store performance. And we'll also look at what happens when you update worksheets that are linked as we have created here. So thanks for watching this one. Hope you found something useful in there and I'll see you next time.